ankle mobility. We know how important it is. Give me 10 minutes or less and I'm going to show you how to fix your wonky stiff ankles. Dr. Michael Lau here from the Prehab Guys. First thing we're going to do before we work on any sort of ankle mobility, before we get and talk about it, we have to assess first. So I'm using an iPhone, the measure app on an iPhone. What you're going to do is you're going to put it on someone's shin. You're going to line up the, the line, so get it this way. Oops, I clicked it too many times. You're going to line it up perfectly there. And then once it's lined up, you're going to click. Once you click, Craig's going to go forward with his ankle. The key here is the heel has to stay down. We're going to see how far he can go. Oh, heel came up. Come back a little bit. Oh, keep, go forward, go forward. We're going to stop him there. So that's 36. So we're always going to take a measurement before. The big thing is when we're doing this, I said, Craig, where do you feel like you're limited? If you had to say, where in your ankle do you feel limited? Back here because I did stairs yesterday, so my calf is tight. <laughs> Perfect. So the most common complaint you're going to hear is either somewhere in the back or somewhere in the front. First thing in the back, what we have in the back are our soft tissues in our Achilles tendon, our calf. We have two big muscles here. We have the gastroc, which has two heads inside and outside, and the soleus in the middle. We can stretch both of them, but slightly different ways. So let's first show a traditional calf stretch. Like we're going to standing up. In a traditional calf stretch where we're, the leg's in the back, the knee is straight. So the gastroc muscle, gastroc nemius, it actually crosses behind the knee. We usually only think about it as being below the knee, but it's actually going to start up here. So what that means is that when the knee is straight, we're stretching the proximal portion or the, the uh, portion closest to the body. And then when the ankle goes into dorsiflexion, you're actually stretching both. So if someone wants to stretch their gastroc, we're going to stretch it with the knee straight and the ankle in dorsiflexion. Now, when they say they feel tightness in the back, we don't know what one it is. So we're going to do both. So this is your typical gastroc stretch. Craig can hold them, hold that end range for five seconds and kind of rock back and forth. He can even play with different angles. So going outside a little bit versus going inside. Now to stretch the other muscle, the soleus, the soleus is a one joint muscle, meaning it actually attaches below the knee joint. So we want to take that tension off the gastroc by bending the knee. So now when we go into this dorsiflexion stretch, we can more bias the soleus muscle. And you're going to notice you get way more dorsiflexion in there. It didn't just happen magically. We just slackened one of the muscles that limits it. So this stretch, now Craig's getting his soleus stretch. So those are our two biggest ways. In addition to soft tissue techniques, you can foam roll, you can use a Theragun, whatever you want to do. That's how you're going to hit back of the ankle. Now, there's a lot of people that actually get a lot of discomfort and even like pinching sensations in the front. When we're in the front, we're going to just limit that in a broad category. That's a joint restriction. We can say it's the talocrural joint, which is your ankle joint, but it's just a joint restriction. Now, there are three main ways, things that you guys can do at home to work on that. We're going to show all the banded ones right now. So your typical banded ankle dorsiflexion that I'm sure most people have seen on social media use one of these super bands. Everyone does this thing flat. So go ahead and put your ankle in there, start doing it. I'm going to grab this. <laughs> Everyone does these things like this and then they walk out and then they let their knee go forward. And by all means, they are driving dorsiflexion through their knee, but this band's not really doing much, especially when people put the band up high. The joint that we're trying to move technically with this band is below. So if we want to put and mobilize a joint below, we need to raise the foot up so that angle's a little different. So go ahead and get your foot up on there. Get it all the way on there, I need to move it. Cool. So you're going to notice, and we'll show a still shot later, that this band is kind of below these two bones, which are called our malleoli. So this is going to be below the joint line now, not up here where we're actually working behind. There are certain motions that happen without diving into them called orthokinematics of where the bones typically move when we go into certain ranges. So we want that band to be low. So now when Craig's here doing his mobility work, he can be going into dorsiflexion, making sure that heel stays down. Technically speaking, that band should be providing resistance going down. With his other arm, if he wants to, he could pull. Don't really have to. Same rules with the stretching. Craig can go straight at me. He can go outwards. He can go inwards. Basically, the goal is just find something that's sticky. He goes, oh, man, that's a little stiff there. I don't know. You tell me what area feels stiff. This feels good. Okay, so then you're going to keep rocking back and forth, and that band is mobilizing it. So another band in one. So this is a distraction technique. So we're going to take this off. I'm going to get rid of this. You go ahead and lie on your back. <clears throat> so for this sucker, go ahead and scoot back a little bit more. Scoot back, back, all the way, all the way, all the way. So what you're going to do, the heel, oh, left foot, right, heel goes in. Once it's in, then you're going to loop it over, just like so. 
and now you're going to scoot back so you get some pressure on that band. So that band should be pulling you. And again, you're going to notice that the wraps are below those two bones. Okay. With this guy, we're going to put it on top. Craig's going to pull his ankle in the dorsiflexion while this band is providing him a distraction force. So you can imagine that the heel right here is being pulled back by this purple band, and then we're gapping the heck out of the joint here. Now, are we, are we actually doing that or not? Who knows? But are we stretching everything in there, the tissues, the joint, the fascia? Yeah, we're stretching a lot of that stuff. And again, we're going to assess, which is what we did before, and then reassess after a lot of these interventions. So Craig can go back and forth with dorsiflexion, and this is more of a distraction for kind of like the subtalar joint. So, and I'll show you the manual techniques after this. So what a therapist would do, this is what we're trying to simulate through these banded distractions. How's that feel? That yeah, feels good. Okay, the last one we're gonna do is one we picked up from the one and only Chris Johnson. It's basically like a lateral tibial glide. So without getting in too much of the specifics of it, the way Craig's gonna try and do this on his own is he's just gonna try to twist his ankle basically. So you're gonna be here, and you're gonna try to keep your knee down and you're just going to twist and pull up basically. And you're gonna feel a nice stretch kind of on the bottom of your ankle. Basically twisting, pull up, that's one version. Some people may not feel it while doing this. What do you feel here? Um, I definitely need to pull my foot up to, up. to feel that uh, stretch. Yeah, and it's gonna be twisting. down in this region. Yeah. Good, so that's one. The other one, if you face the camera, we're gonna go this way, so you have your shoes off. With that inside hand, you're going to then, oh sorry, you're going to torque, you're gonna torque your, the bone you're gonna to torque it, and then you're gonna drive outwards. So you're trying to twist, basically. Twist? Yep, yep, twist. You're trying to twist the heck out of it, and then we'll do zoom-ins later. And again, you're holding here, you're twisting, and then you're driving outside. And again, we're just trying to mobilize everything in that bottom of that ankle joint, or the top, technically the top of that ankle joint. So again, technically this bone, is you're gonna twist, 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 these mobs all simulate other mobs that we would be doing if Craig were coming to see me in the clinic. So if Craig were in the clinic, it's the same kind of things that a therapist would do. So you're going to lie on your back, ankle off the edge over here. Uh, Mike, help me out. Feeling <laughs> stiff. So the first one, that first banded mob, where the band's pulling down, we're technically trying to do some sort of a posterior glide. That would be something like this. Imagine now my hand is that band. I'm doing the same thing that that band was doing as I'm pushing down. That same angle I'm trying to mimic. That pulling one that Craig showed, that would be something like this, where I'm distracting and pulling back, or even giving a little manip. Or, this is a bad angle, but there's another one where you're basically just trying to pull and distract the joint. That last one, which is weird, is we would be doing something like this, keeping this down, and again, you're feeling that massive stretch at the bottom of your ankle down here. These are all different mobs. Whoa. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> These are all different things that we would be doing in the clinic, and those stretches that we went over, those mobs, are what you guys can do at home. Now here comes the best part. We didn't even work too much on it. We're gonna assess and see what that did. Even in the 30 seconds maybe of work. I don't know what we're gonna find, to be perfectly honest. So let's get into that angle. Oh, last one, one more exercise, two more exercises, sorry. Um, let's get a kettlebell, yeah. All right, so after we do all the mobilizations, after we do any stretching, we need to follow that up with some sort of exercise to kind of give your body a new set point of Oh, this is my new range because you got new range either on the table with your therapist or at home using your bands. Once you have that range, we have to learn to use it and tell our body, hey, this is my new ankle mobility. So go ahead and get into a deep squat, as deep of a squat as you deep can. Squat. Yeah. And what you can do with this guy, you can either deep squat and you could rock. So you're rocking, pivoting. There we go. That's one. And again, if you don't have the depth to get into a deep squat, the alternative is you're just gonna kneel like this. And then we can do the same thing almost that we did on there. The kettlebell here too for Craig. So I'm gonna get tired doing it. And Craig could be driving using a kettlebell or his hands and we're driving that dorsiflexion. Again, now we're actively working on it after all the other passive stretches. So maybe we do this for 20 seconds. The other one that we can do is something called pale, pails and rails. So let's try this. So what we're gonna do, Craig's gonna be in the same position He's gonna to try to drive his knee as far forward as he can. We're gonna hold that stretch for about 10 seconds. He's gonna feel a massive stretch. So I don't know, where do you feel it now? Front, back, same area in the back? Yeah, still in the back. Same area in the back. So again, if I were to spend more time, maybe I work soft tissue. Once he holds it for 10 seconds, he's gonna imagine pushing the balls of his toes into the ground. So that's gonna contract his cap. 
He's going to push as hard as he possibly can for 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, oh, 5. Late. And again, he's not moving back. After 10 seconds, now he's going to try to drive his knee forward. And by lifting, he's going to try to lift his toes up, which will drive his knee into more dorsiflexion. 10 second hold. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. The phone go. And good. So we just went over a ton of different things. Granted, we didn't spend too much time doing them, but let's just see what, what changed, if anything. Let's go to the side view again. How do I do this? Okay. Uh, let's go this way so the camera can see. So again, we're going to level it out first. So I'm going to go here, go back a little bit, come to zero. I'm going to get it level there. Click it, go. I don't even remember what the number was. What was the number before? 46. Okay, we're at 41, 40 to 41. So four degrees in a short amount of time. Now, if you find one of those, we just went over like nine different things that you could do. You don't have to do all nine, no way. You find the one or two that you're like, wow, I really feel a difference with it. What were those, what were those two for you? I like this one. I like the power rails. And then I also liked uh, the twisting. I've never been a big fan of mobilizations. I always like something active. So for me, because I do feel like it's really my soleus, doing this one and the contract relax for soft tissue, that was, that was a big win for me. Perfect. So you find those ones that work. Again, where you feel the tightness should key you in on what to do too. Craig felt the tightness in the back. Those joint things probably are not the best thing for him. Could they help? Yeah. Maybe. But the other things, those are the more low hanging fruit that we're going to attack first. So give this a shot. We're going to go close-ups of all these. We'll include some of the exercises in the show notes. If you like this, after doing this, try your squat again. Try the stairs. Whatever it is that you feel limited on, go try those exercises and spend some time at the bottom where you're working on your maximum ankle dorsiflexion because if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.